You know, all of us, I think so many of us here, whether we're here as a private caregiver or a bigger professional caregiver, and I think a lot of us can identify with a lot of the what's been said today about the stress, the frustrations, the joys, the moments we try to find that um, give us peace, try to find a way to um, enjoy this journey. It's a hard one, but sometimes it's very rewarding in different ways. And however you deal with it, I think each of us kind of deals with it differently um, and how you choose to share it, process it, and spend it is really up to you. Our next speaker um, has a very unique aspect and um, outlook on life. Her name is Toni Wambaker. She's a wife, a mother of four, and currently a caregiver for her mom, Yvonne, who was diagnosed with Alzheimer's in 2009. And Toni's here today. She wants to share a video that she made on the seven stages of Alzheimer's and videoing, videotaping her experiences with her mom have become her therapy, her way of dealing with caregiving, but it's also extended to her daughter in sharing in that experience. And so she wants to give you a peek inside their lives. Tony Wallmaker. Central Nevada, 
in Tonopah, Nevada, and then she spent her later years in Reno, Nevada. This is a picture of her and my mom in 2011, and again, all three of us in 2011. She lived a long, vibrant, and happy life and just passed away this last April at the age of 93. She had no dementia at all. And on the other side of my family is Grandma Minnie. Grandma Minnie is probably the most important role model in my life. Um, and um, she is, her mother came to America as a mail order bride and settled in Tonopah, Nevada. So our family has been in Tonopah since 1912. And this is my dad and Grandma Minnie holding our son Trevin in 2001. And my grandma Minnie and I in 2010 at her 90th birthday party. She is now going on 95. She has no dementia. She lives healthy, independent life at home in the, in the home next door to the house she was born in. Oh so um, pretty amazing. So I'm all these things. I also happen to be a um, certified elementary school teacher. When I stepped away from teaching, to be a mom, concentrate on being a mom a little bit more, that was in 2007. That's when I started thinking, mm, something's not quite right with my mom. And um, I started taking her to the doctors back then in 2007. And that's when I, I you know, started putting the pieces together also. So I'm not only, I've been out of the classroom for a long time, but I do still consider myself a teacher. It's just now my classroom's a little different. Um, I shared the pictures of my grandmothers for two reasons. Because they're two of the people who made me the person I am today in a big way. But they're also, it shows that, because we all know, as we, old, as we age, our chances of getting dementia only get higher. But here's my two grandmothers that both lived into their 90s with no dementia. So it also shows, and my mom, who was diagnosed in her early 60s, so it shows how tricky the disease can be. And I just wanted to kind of point that out, that you just never really know who, who is susceptible and who isn't. So today, I want to, um, the biggest thing I want you to walk away today after listening to me is whether you're a person here with dementia, which I know there's a few, or you're a family caregiver, or you work in the profession, I want you to just walk away and know that you're not alone. You walk the same, same path as I do. And even though our paths might be, be different, I'm sure they're very similar. So here's my path. In 2009, I sat in this very room right after my mom was diagnosed. And I, that day I felt overwhelmed. I think I cried the entire day. Um, I was overwhelmed with grief. I felt hopeless and, and helpless. Um, I felt like my world was falling apart, and I had no idea what I was going to do. Brings back a lot of memories, <laughs> sorry. Um, then 2010 rolled around, and um, Lisa, Dr. Rosenberg, really hit on when she was talking about self-efficacy. That really sunk in with me, because 2010 is when my self-efficacy kind of came about and was like, because at first I was, there's no way I'm taking care of my mom. Absolutely not. I can't do that. But in 2010, I started to realize, mm, that's my purpose, that's what I'm supposed to do. And so, I didn't feel confident though, my self-efficacy wasn't there in the home we were living in. So our home was a wonderful house, but when my mom came to visit, it wasn't um, adequate for caregiving. So we started looking for a house, and this is the house we bought in October of 2010. The portion circled in yellow, is an apartment that is absolutely amazing and wonderful for my mom. This house was actually built by a family with four children that actually were in the process of um, taking care of their grandmother while they were building the house. So they built the apartment to be dementia friendly, which is amazing. And it's amazing that it's in Crunch too. So. <laughs> <laughs> and then, um, so when, uh, I forgot to mention, let me go back to that. Um, in 2010, we moved into the house in October, December 29th, 2010 rolled around and mom was with us full time. And there was no looking back. 
Then in 2011, I spent most of my time educating myself, learning a lot about the brain and about Alzheimer's and trying to figure out exactly what I, what I was facing. Um, I was really still getting by moment by moment, um, but doing the best I could to educate myself. I was very overwhelmed most of the time and I was still really trying to figure out the whole caregiving lifestyle. Then in 2012, I was at this conference yet again and I saw this man speak. Alan Arnett, and he changed me. His, his talk changed my life. It changed the direction of my life. And he knows that. I've let him know. <laughs> I'm glad uh, I made direct contact with him. Um, I knew that day when I went home that I needed to do more. And that's my mantra. I have cards, like you see on my cards, that says do something. Whether the something you're going to do is just small, like volunteer or um, donate or anything, just share my video, do something. So I started videotaping our journey, my mom and I's journey. And in 2012, I released my first long video titled Our Reality of Alzheimer's. And Our Reality of Alzheimer's 2012 did, has done quite well on YouTube. It has over 20,000, 23,000 views. Um, and I've spent time in these last couple of years making other short clips and short videos of my mom. Some are silly and some are longer. So in 2014, almost just over a year ago, I released my second long video, which we'll be watching a portion of today, The Seven Stages of Alzheimer's Through a Caregiver's Eyes. That video has gone beyond my expectations and continues to keep me busy. Um, I, had, I had no idea that it would touch people the way it has. Um, I, as I received messages from places all over, the world, places like India, Iraq, Denmark, Australia, Switzerland, Romania, and Malaysia, I realized that no matter where we live, and no matter what our socioeconomic economic status is, no matter which religion we practice, or what sex we are, or any of that, what our nationality is, it doesn't matter when it comes to Alzheimer's. It, all, it affects us all the same way. So today, I'm going to share a portion of the seven stages of Alzheimer's through a caregiver's eyes. We're in, 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 in its entirety, it's about 55 minutes long. We don't have time for that today. So we'll, we're going to watch about 30 minutes of it, a little, little bit more. Um, if you'd like to view the whole thing, it's on YouTube. <laughs> so you can just uh, search it, the title or my name, or I have cards on the front table here. I have some cards link cards that will get you there. Um, it has, as of this morning, it has been viewed over 124,000 times. I, I can't do a whole lot for my mom besides care for her as best I can and show her love, compassion, respect, and patience. So I find a lot of hope and peace and comfort in making videos that seem to help others. And I also feel comforted by knowing that I can support them in some way. So I made it a goal, and I'm a little worried about this some days because it gets kind of crazy, but I made it a goal to, to respond to every single message I receive. And I have stuck to that. This video alone has received, well, it has 549 messages underneath just this video, but half of those are mine because I haven't met that goal. I have responded, I hope, <laughs> I hope I haven't missed like one person, but I've responded, I believe, to every person that has commented, good or bad, because <laughs> there are some negative comments there, too. So today, I hope you will find a little peace and value in my video, and enjoy it. So I made this video because the stages haunt me, but they also extremely interest me. I was always wondering where my mom was at in, the, in this progression. It is definitely a journey through these stages. The long and winding path through, through, <laughs> sorry. The long and winding path through these stages is different for everyone. However, I'm sure there were many of you thinking as you watched how this could almost be your story. 
I am in no way an expert, just a fellow traveler on the same road you may be on. I can only speak from my experience. Everyone's experiences are different and yet so very similar. Sometimes just knowing we are on the, on the same road together seems to lighten the load. So I hope in my sharing this, I have lightened your load a bit. Um, it, it's my hope that uh, this video fills you with a little bit of peace knowing that you aren't alone. You are most definitely, definitely not alone. There's thousands, millions of us caregivers. I pray my video has brought a bit of hope also to anyone that feels like Alzheimer's is hopeless the disease within the person in many ways is hopeless, but the soul within the person is not. I do hope you will find the time to watch the ending part of my video in your own time. As the last 15 minutes or so, there's an amazing message of hope um, through my mom's testimony of faith that I discovered just recently. This disease takes away a lot. However, love always, always remains. The more we stand together and love one another and those with dementia, the better off this world will be. It is my goal to raise awareness about Alzheimer's and educate the public so that people will understand just how important it is to find a cure. I continue, oh, let me go back. I continue to make short videos and I inspired my own daughter, Kayla, who is 10, to, to start her own video line. She calls herself the Grammy Whisperer. One other thing, too, I would have to say from my observation of the video is that the fact that even through and into the early seventh stage, Tony, the fact that your mom is smiling in so many of those photos and videos, I think is a true testament to how your family's Thank you. 